I guess my intent would be the good day to be in the house of the Lord. That's right. Amen. You know, uh, I, 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 I had to ride down the road and this hit me. It's an oldie but goldie, but I thought I, I really wanted to use it today. You know, so I try to start out with something, you know, mild because sometimes the sermon's not so mild. Amen. Uh, uh, an 85 year old woman went on a blind date with a 95 year old man. And when she got back from the date, her daughter was excited. She said, How was your date? She said, It weren't so good. She said, I had to slap him three times. She said, did he get fresh? She said, no, I thought he was dead. <laughs> I give you a sleep on that one. <laughs> Got a different book, amen. Home of the free because of the prey. You know, there's a lot of people, they're, they're, we, they, we don't even know all the people that actually died in service. Sometimes they're even told that they died in training accidents. They died in car wrecks and stuff uh, on base when actually they were overseas somewhere doing covert operations. And, and so we don't even know all that's going on because everything is can be so secret. And, and, and there's people that you don't have any idea of the stuff that they had to go through uh, for this country. And so I thank God for every last one of them. And there's, there's, there, there's so many that have died uh, in service for the country. And, and we don't know them all, but we owe them all. Amen? Y'all say that with me. We don't know them all, but we owe them all. And I thank God one more time. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise for these great people. Amen. Now get your Bibles out. And we're going to go right where we were at last week. We're going to go to part two where we were at last week. Good, good morning, go. I'm going to try to let the cloud down a little bit further this week, amen. But for the benefit of those that weren't here last week, we're going to kind of do a little bit of rehashing, but not a lot, but just a little bit, and then we're going to jump right in. Stand for the reading of the word, 1 Samuel chapter 16. How many's ever been hurt? I mean, really hurt. To where you honestly, you feel the scars every day. You know, a lot of times people say when they have a lost note, you know, I have to tell you that this week was a, was a different experience for me, and I'll explain a little later on, but it was a different experience for me. A lot of times we experience loss and hurt, we say we don't want to talk about it, and the problem is that even though you may not talk about it, you live it every day. You still live it. You still, it comes to you, you think about it, certain things happen, certain songs are played, certain things, you go by certain places and, 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 and you can feel it. And, and so, so even though uh, it's there, you still have to keep moving forward. And so that's what we're talking about today. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with thee, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him who I name unto thee. Father, stretch your hands away. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, God, for all the things you've done for us, Lord. And, God, you mean so much to us. And I ask you right now, Lord, to minister by it to us and through us, Father. And let this day, God, not only be a moral day where we remember those that died for us, Lord, and, or, or Decoration Day. We don't forget this, Lord. But we hold it tight to our heart and near our heart, knowing that there's people that are with you today that could be with us, but instead they pay that ultimate sacrifice for us so that we can be free and even have the freedom to say the Pledge of Allegiance without fear of the law coming in and arresting us. I ask you right now, Lord, to bless and anoint this whole service. It's yours. We give it to you right now. Maybe just your friend in church said, Amen. 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 Wait now, shake somebody's hand and tell them it's a blessing to be here with you in the Lord today. Help. Amen. You be seated. Amen. All right, we're going we're gonna to kind of go over, we're going to go over some of the stuff we went over last week, but it's, I'm 
we're just going to kind of breeze through it because last week we put the plow down and we hit it hard. So we're not going to hit the first part as hard as we did last week. But when we, hit, when we get to that second part, you'll see it. Uh, Samuel actually uh, uh, was living in a time of, of uh, transition because Saul, the king, had blown it. See, so Saul, he was, he was a great call in his life to be the king, and there was a great anointing on his life, but because he chose to do it his way, then there was a great fall. And so Saul mourned this, and there was uh, an unexpected, unexpected end to Saul's reign and an unexpected season of hurt and mourning with Samuel, also with Saul, and there was a beginning. And he had no idea that David was going to wind up being the king, but here we go again. This is from last week. I'm just going to thumb up here. Now, uh, a new king was about to step on the scene, and Samuel was about to discover some things. God was about to teach him through all of this, because even Samuel had not been through these things. With transition, always comes change. And with change here, you got change and chance. Of course, I don't want to say chance. I'd rather say faith. But, but with change, there's always positives and there's always negatives either way. And usually during this thing, somebody loses uh, uh Miss or misunderstands what's going on through this, so it can cause some really bad pain, and it also causes anxiety, not just for one, but many times it causes anxiety for everybody involved. Now, now remember now, when, 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 when you're going through this stuff, when there's transition, when God is helping you get through something that you've lost, remember, Satan loves this because now he can break your focus. He keeps you looking in all the wrong directions. Not only break your focus, he can break your stride because he can stop your forward motion. And then finally, he can break your spirit, can keep you from believing that God can get you back on track. So now, this is, this is the last part we talked about last week. Uh, what was Samuel needing to find out? In order to get on with what he had to do, number one, he had to get over it. Now, let me explain that again, because I don't want to be a misunderstanding there when I get going through this. See, there had been a great disappointment, because he had a lot invested in Saul. He had not a lot invested in Saul, he had a lot invested in Israel. And so uh, <clears throat> God had worked a lot with him, and so there was a lot invested, there was a lot expected, and it didn't turn out the way he expected it. Matter of fact, it was just a lot of discouragement, because how can it happen this way? How can this man be losing his throne? How can this stuff be happening like this? How can everything be coming to a halt? And what if we did something different? What if, what if, there's all the hows and the what ifs. And what happens is there's a delay, and when there's a delay in your life, you lose energy. And you begin to lose expectancy. And why is that? And here it goes. I'm going to talk about getting over it. Here, let me just show this. You, you can't change the past. Somebody tell somebody you can't change the past. You can't change the past, but you can make adjustments in your present for a better future. So see, sometimes <clears throat> the loss is too great. The connection is too strong. The cut is too deep. So when this happens, there are times... <clears throat> That getting over it simply means learning how to deal with it. Let's just use those words, learning how to deal with it. Because there are certain things you will not get over. And there are certain things that it's impossible for you to get over. You know, <clears throat> this weekend was, uh, was one of those kind of a wild weekend for me because Bethany always said, Dad, I want to get married and I want to have kids and give you plenty of grandkids. I said, well, girl, I'm pretty sure you can do that. And at the end, of course, we knew that she was not going to get married. And so I was dreading my first wedding. And so this weekend was the first wedding. But as God would have it, several things transpired before we did this wedding on Friday night. I really didn't know exactly how I was going to feel about the wedding, although it was my niece. And uh, they had other plans, but my niece said, no, I want my Uncle David to do it. And so I understood that was the Holy Spirit working in her and I was working with some people that I very much loved, so it was a lot easier. But on Friday, <clears throat> I go to the cancer center. I've gone to hospitals hundreds of times since Bethany died, but I have not gone to that cancer center. And so I went to the cancer center, and I went in, in palliative care, and I prayed with somebody, and I led them to Christ. And as I walked in and started putting on the garb, the gown and all this to walk in, I had something happen to me that I've never had happen. I've helped people through it, but I've never done it myself. While I'm in there, I walk through that door, and I start to push the door open. I put the garb on, and start to push the door open. All I could see was me pushing that door open and walking in on Bethany, dying. And all of a sudden, I had a, a grip in my 
my chest. And my chest got so, it's like somebody just took my chest and squeezed it. And I couldn't breathe. And I was going, and I said, it's okay. God's got this. God's got this. And then I started sweating. And so I go to pray with that person. When I get to pray with that person, I said, okay. And I, I had blood pressure monitor on my arm. So I was checking. I said, my blood pressure is fine. And my pulse is fine, but I'm still sweating and my chest is hurting. And oh, oh it's just and it's squeezing me. I said, so this is an anxiety attack. And I said, you know what? Satan, you're not going to win. Flesh, you're not going to win. God's going to win. And so then I let out to flow. went up on the fourth floor where Bethany was at. And I walked through every hallway more than one time. And I carried these things that says Team Bethany. And God's got this. They had some new ones made. It says God's got this on one side. And it says either way I went on the other side. And I walked through. The nurses came up and the PAs came up. And I was talking to them. And the whole time I was talking, I was sweating. My hair was just laying down. I, my chest was hurting. And somebody said, are you okay? And I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I walked around. And they said, and, and, and I text Linda, I said, uh oh, Linda, I think I finally found what an anxiety attack feels like. And then you know how women are, you better go get your heart checked. I said, I'm fine, it's just I'm here for the first time at Peril Bethany's room, and I did not know it was going to be like this, but God's got this. Either way, we win. And so I just kept on walking around, I kept on passing out stuff, and I ran out of them. And some other nurses come and say, Well, I wanted some of them. I said, Well, hold on. And so I said, Damn, you got to know you're not going to win. Flesh, you're not going to win. I went out in the parking lot, got another handful, came back up, and went up the second time. And, and so after I gave it to everybody, I said, Y'all, it's good. But I, I mean, I was sweating. I still couldn't breathe. I said, I'm going to be fine. I went and I, and I did went to my little safe place. It's called, y'all probably heard of safe place. It's called Starbucks. <laughs> but I can tell you, if you have an anxiety attack, a Starbucks might not be the best thing. <laughs> so I, I did. I sat right in Starbucks, and, and I, after I got caught, after I felt like I could breathe again and, and, and all that, so I got in my car and I left. I come home, and then I went right uh, up there, and then I had the wedding rehearsal. And I got the wedding rehearsal, and all by that time, I felt good, and I was all, I was concerned about the wedding. I wasn't concerned about going to cancer center. The cancer center is what got me. And after I got to the wedding, everything was cool. We had a fun time. We cut up. We had a ball. Yesterday we had the wedding. But I can tell you one thing. It was hot. My, my niece thought that if she had it in early May, or uh, in May, not early May, mid-May, it wouldn't be so hot. She picked the two hottest days in the year. <laughs> Amen. Amen. One thing about it, we didn't have any flies or mosquitoes. They were all down there getting resuscitated on the other side of it. Okay. So, so again... You don't necessarily get over it. You learn how to deal with it. You learn how to accept it. You let God take care of it. Because if you let God take care of it, something special happens. Because I honestly, I, when I went to the wedding, I actually felt refreshed and I felt cleansed. And, and I said, well, thank you, God, that what I thought was a ne negative thing, if I refused to give in to it and just faced it, and then faced it again, went back up the second time, God, let that be a cleansing instead of a destruction for me. So, so watch this now. Here we go. Here. Here's, our, here's the new stuff right here. So he had to get over, or in other words, learn how to, you know, he had to let go. Watch this now. Listen to me carefully. You need to learn this, listen to this. You know, you have to let go of what might have been. And move to what could be. There's people right now, you know, uh, I even heard of somebody just recently, well, well, well if such and such had been here, this was how, would, how they would have done it. You don't know that. <coughs> you're, you're holding on to what might have been. Well, if Bethany <coughs> had not died, then it could have been Bethany's wedding. I don't know that. Let go of what might have been and move to what could be. See, it's very important. Philippians 3 to 13, it says, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, or I have not arrived yet. I, I'm not on the top shelf yet. Uh, but it's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, see forget means to, means to, 
to, to when, when I forget that things are behind, means that's no longer my focus. If you need healing today, then you've got to let the stuff behind you no longer be the focus. Because as long as it's the focus, you'll never find healing. As long as it's the focus, that's all you're going to think about. And you're going to think about how bad things were, how things didn't end the way you thought it should, or things didn't do the way you thought it should be. He says, let that not be your focus. I want you to adjust and start reaching forth. And then I want you to press, which means now you've got a new focus. Have you ever seen a, uh, uh, you ever seen a, a horse when it wins the race? Have you ever seen a runner when he wins the race and he gets the, have you ever seen a guy win the race like this? He's always like this. Why? That's what it means by pressing. It means to give it all you got and keep on going. Push yourself ahead. Push yourself to the limits. Push yourself beyond what you ever thought you could do. Press. Push yourself. Trust it. Okay? So, so here it is. Look, the lesson here, that's number one lesson is, it's okay, listen to me, it's okay to slow down and to recoup. It's okay to slow down and regroup. Sometimes we have to. But in the middle of slowing down and recouping, remember this. It's never okay to stop. Don't stop living. Don't stop dreaming. Don't stop expecting God to do something just because he didn't answer that prayer. My prayer was let Bethany be healed of cancer. You know what? She's healed of cancer. She's totally healed. Matter of fact, she's better off than I am right now. That was not my prayer. My prayer was, Lord, give her some more years here with us. That is not how it happened. But you know what? I can't stop living because of that. And I could not, not do that wedding yesterday because I was wanting to do Bethany's wedding, and that will never happen. Guess what? It's okay to back up. It's okay to get your thoughts together. It's okay to spend some time alone with God and talk to Him, but you can't live in yesterday. Because you can't do a thing about yesterday except learn from it. So it's not okay to stop. Now watch this. That was number one. In order to get on with it, you have to get you have to get over it or get or learn how to deal with it. Number two, you got to get under it. You got to get under the anointing. You know, uh, uh, the older I get, the more I understand how powerful the anointing is. You know, these circumstances for for Samuel had been very taxing. You know, he, he was in bad shape because he, his sons are acting kind of crazy. He's got a crazy family. Anybody here got anybody crazy in your family? Don't point. Please don't point at each other. <laughs> okay. Except for one guy did this. <laughs> okay. His family was crazy. He was having this, had a dysfunctional family. Here he is. He's got a dysfunctional king. He's trying to serve God. He's trying to bring forth God's word to the people. But he's living in a very dysfunctional <laughs> arena. And, and so he's taxed to death. He, he, he is about to explode. So now he's down. And so God says, I need you. Don't stay down. Remember, you can recoup. It's okay to recoup. It's okay to let God talk to you and give a fresh anointing. Watch this. There comes a time when you need to get back up. But as you're getting up, remember this. Don't get up until God fills you up. You hear me? Get up, but as you get up, let God fill you up. Psalm 92 and 10, it says, My horn, which is an emblem of excessive strength and stately grace, you have exalted like that of a wild ox. It says unicorn in the King James Version, but we know there is no such thing as a, a unicorn. Unicorn, what it means is wild ox. A wild ox, I am anointed with fresh oil. So what's this? He had still oil. Anybody here got any still oil? Don't raise your hands, but please think. How long has it been since you felt God's fresh hand touch you? How long has it been since you felt that fresh wind blow by you? How long has it been since you felt God just, just pick you up and do something special? I'm telling you, after Friday, after I faced that fear, and I didn't realize that was a fear. I had no idea that was a fear, but it was a fear. And when I faced it, it caused anxiety. And when I faced that anxiety, and then just to, just to put a little seal of, a seal of nanny nanny boo boo on it, I went to the car and got some more stuff and came back the second time and walked around again and walked to every place Bethany had been in that cancer center. 
I felt freshness. I felt something different. I felt something inside. And when I got in that wind, which I was dreading, I no longer dreaded the wind. It was actually, we had a ball yesterday, the day before, and yesterday. If you have stale oil, you know, how many's ever, how many's ever gone to cook and you, mama, mama used to, I don't know about y'all's mama. And Beverly did it too back when she cooked that stuff. Of course, now we don't use all that stuff anymore. Mama would fry chicken and then pour the stuff back in the Crisco can. Did your mom ever use oil more than once? And the first time I didn't smell anything, you just smelled, I just saw Crisco. The second time I smelled fried chicken. Then she used it for something else, and she used it for something else, and pretty soon, when she pulled it out, it stunk. And she said, son, we need some fresh oil, because this is stale. And whatever I cook in it, everything I touch with this is going to be stale and taste awful. Some of us right now in our own life, we're trying to cook and we got stale oil. We don't realize everything around us is stinking. Like Grandpa had a great, his Grandpa had a great old big handlebar mustache. And one day he was laying down sleeping, and the grandkids were staying over, and they went and got some of that old stinky cheese. What kind of what's the stinky cheese? Limburger cheese. They went and got Limburger cheese while he was sleeping, and they spread it on his mustache. And he woke up and said. It stinks in this bedroom. What in the world? I gotta get some air. So he goes to the living room and sits in the chair. So I just recline in the chair and he went, It stinks in here too. He says, Man, this is really bad. He so he goes over and he says, Get some on the front porch. So I can get some fresh air. And he goes up on the fresh on the front porch and he goes, Just as I look, he says, Yeah, it stinks out here. He says, Just as I thought, the whole world stinks. Some of y'all need to check your mustache. Because you think the whole world is stinking, and it's not. You got still oil. You need God to give you fresh oil. God's got to give you something inside of you that's powerful. You got to feel it. So, and so he had, he needed a fresh touch, and he needed a fresh oil. So God said, you need to get up, okay? You need to get up and get that horn. And he said, well, don't just get up and get that horn. He says, now watch this. He had to get under. Come on, come on, there you go. See, it was his duty. Watch this. Paul told Timothy, he said, I want you to stir up the gift that's in you. Timothy was a young man, but Timothy, although he was a young man, he was an overseer of many churches. He was Paul's right-hand man. He was who Paul used whenever he would go out of the places. He let Timothy take care of business for him. And Timothy was being talked about, and Timothy was being run over because he was a young guy. And he said, I, and he was having anxiety attacks, and he was having a hard time. And Paul told Timothy, he said, stir up the gift that is in you. If you'll stir that gift that is in you, something special is going to happen. So it's a personal responsibility. Somebody else can't take care of your stale oil. you got to take care of that stale oil. you got to ask God for a special touch of the anointing. Matter of fact, everybody stop and just put your hands up. Put them up right now. Put them both up. Put them both up. And repeat after me. Father, I need fresh oil. I'm tired of the stale I need you right now to do something special in my life. And I thank you because fresh oil is what I need. Go ahead, raise your hand and clap, clap it to the Lord. Clap it to the Lord. Come on, clap it to the Lord. pursuit that's in the present tense. Be filled every day. This isn't just Sunday. Let's go to church Sunday. And because of the Spirit, we had a wonderful time. God wants the Spirit to move every day in your life. Every day. Amen? So that's number two. Watch this. You can't give what you don't have. I'll let that sink in. You can't give what you don't have. If you got stale oil, 
can't give fresh oil. Remember, Mom would say, anything I touch, anything I cook is going to be bad because I got this bad oil, and especially if she burn it. Oh, it was terrible. Amen. So what's this? You got to keep from running on empty. You can't keep running on empty. So now, in order to get on with it, watch this. He had to get over it. Just get up. He had to get under it. Fill your horn. And then he had to get with it and go. Get up. Fill your horn and go. So watch this. This is cool. I love this. Did you know it's your destiny to be blessed? There's not a person in here God has not destined to be blessed. God didn't walk through here and go, you know what? I think I'm going to bless everybody but Brandon. I decided I'm going to pick on Brandon this week and I'm just going to beat him up and the rest of you are blessed. That's not how it works. God's destined every last one of us to be blessed. We're blessed in different ways. We're blessed in different, different capacities. But God blesses every one of us and it's our destiny to be blessed. But he blesses us so that we can distribute, that we can be a blessing to others. So you, if, you ain't, if you're running on empty, how can you bless others? You've got to let God touch you and lift you up and strengthen you. Get the fresh oil. Accept the blessing from God, whatever the blessing may be, and then pass it on. You know, watch this. Get ready to close. Joshua 1. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now I want you to get up and go. I don't want you laying down here mourning over the past. Moses got you where you're at. But it's not my plan for Moses to go the rest of the way. My plan is for you to take him in. And this is where I get this from. We say this just about, not every Sunday, but close to every Sunday. This is where I got it from. Ready? God told Joshua, he said, Moses, my servant. Now let's get it out. Joshua, get your Bibles out. Joshua chapter 1. We're going to read this together. Now if you think Joshua is in the, if you think Joshua is in the New Testament, you got a problem. The sixth book in the Bible. Y'all got to say amen. It is good stuff. Ready? Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Noah, Moses, his minister, saying, Get ready. Moses, my servant, is dead. I remember saying this many, many times before I preach. The past is behind you. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise. Go over this Jordan, all these people, to the land which I do give them. The future is ahead of you. Every place that the soil you put your tread upon, I have given you as I said unto Moses. God is with you, and nothing shall be impossible. Let's say that together. We say it all the time, but let's say it again. This is where it's coming from. Ready? Look at somebody telling me, the past is behind you. The future is ahead of you. God is with you, and nothing shall be impossible. And nothing shall be impossible. You know what it's time to do? Rise up and get with it. Rise up and get with it. You know why? Lesson number three, I love this. God still wants to use you. Just because it hasn't, just because where you're at right now, you don't understand this and the pain is great and there's hurt, God still wants to use you. Don't let it stop you. I, I love this. Brandon, come here and get a place for us, bro. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all read this out loud. Go ahead. You are not alone in your battles. Praise me. Signed, Jesus. Wow. Everybody stand. Every hit by 
mouth, every eye closed. Let me ask a question. Are you here today? Now with us, but your heart is back there somewhere. Your mind is back there somewhere. You're stuck in what could have been. You're stuck in I don't know. You're stuck in what if. And it's kept you from reaching forth today to what God's got for you. I'm talking to you, every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. If you find yourself constantly stuck in yesterday and what happened back then and you can't seem to shake it, every head bowed, every eye closed, would you raise that hand, just put it up for a minute. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. I want us all to pray together. Get ready. Ready? Lord, I thank you for my yesterdays because it made me what I am today. Now, in order for me to use what I am today, I have to release yesterday. With your help, I'm going to release it right now in the name of Jesus. It's yours, God. Every one if is yours. Every what could have been is yours. Don't say it. Everything that's holding me back now is yours, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. Amen. Now maybe you're here right now. And that yesterday, not only has it robbed you of the power of today and the hope of tomorrow, but it's hindered your relationship with God. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If your relationship's hindered with God, you want to make sure that it's no longer hindered while nobody's looking. We just slide that hand up and say, I need my relationship back where it belongs with God. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless him. Again, we're all going to pray together. Lord, I'm sorry that my yesterday not only robbed me of today, but it's hindered my relationship with you. Forgive me for letting it stay in my mind and my heart and my soul. Release me, Lord, and give me a fresh anointing today. I rededicate my life to you today. Say it. Today, I accept fresh oil in the name of Jesus. Now we're going to do something now. Here's what I want you to do. I say everybody again, I want you to put them hands up. Put them up. And I want you, however you want to, whether loud, quiet, sitting, laying, whatever. But I want you right now to thank God for a fresh touch, a fresh anointing, and fresh oil. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that you have not left us alone to fight these battles. You have not left us alone to have to keep living in yesterday. But, God, you have given us something special that we can look toward you, God, and keep our eye on the goal. We can, we can forget everything that's behind us, and we can move forward and press toward that goal. And know, God, that we haven't arrived yet. But, God, we know we're getting there, and we thank you for the fresh oil. We thank you for the fresh oil. We thank you for the fresh oil. We thank you for the fresh oil in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Look at my tell God's got this. And the 
either way we win. That's right. Amen. I want y'all to be blessed today. Have a wonderful rest of Memorial Day. And remember, let's don't forget that there's a lot of men and women and even children that are not able to be with us in body today because they paid the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. And I would hope to thank you that if, if, if that choice came to me, I would be able to make the same choice. Amen. 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 Now, now, and also, come back Tuesday night. Uh, Brother Benny is going to be taking care of Tuesday night because I'm going to be doing training. I thought it was through. I got all mixed up. I told you about Bethany here. Bethany is my, my corraler. And Bethany would have told me, Dad, it weren't last week, it's this week. But I'm doing training at the Fit Detention Center, so... so <laughs> So you know about it, that's, that's here. I, I'm learning how to deal without my my, my uh, little corral over beside me on my door. Look, she was my Jiminy Cricket. Turn left, Dad. Turn right, Dad. Get out of here, Dad. You don't we need to go, Dad. I don't have all that, but that's okay because I, I, actually that's what your phone is supposed to do. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. God's good. All the time. Brother Frank, dispense us in prayer, please. Father God, we thank you called forth this day, Lord. And help us to apply it to our lives, Lord God. Put the past behind us and the future of us, Lord God. Let us go forth under the anointing, Lord, to accomplish all that you desire us to accomplish. And we'll be sure, Father, to give you the praise, the glory, and honor for it all. In Jesus Christ, that we pray.